each year I try to uh, end the classes with something that's uh, hopefully kind of useful um, and interesting, uh, some sort of where knowledge of general physics is uh, comes into it, uh, makes it easier to understand or understand more. And for fall 2020, um, the suggestions I got were different from 8.30 and 9.30. So in 8.30, I talked about energy, uh, nuclear energy, uh, different aspects of potential energy, turning into kinetic energy and electric energy and things like that. It's going to be this physics and medicine or health at 9.30 because that was a request. Here we go. All right. Okay. So um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about physics, medicine, health. There's lots of possible topics here like human or animal performance. So I decided on just three things. Um, hopefully there'll be time for all. The first one I'll, I'll spend the most time is sound wave harmonics and filtering in the vocal track, which is related to um, the recitation you had yesterday. And this gets into uh, the things I was talking about, how waves can be superposed on each other, added, and uh, frequency and uh, versus wavelength and things like that. Uh, another is a, uh, basically Pascal's law, why they tell you to hold your wrist to your heart when they use those uh, wristband automatic measurement uh, blood pressure devices like they do at my dentist's office. Um, so repeat the Pascal's law calculation for waist, you know, armrest versus on your heart. And another uh, last one, no, why traveling uh, farther in a shop, stopping car, like relative to the car, let's say, uh, is, is worse than being stopped right away by your seatbelt. So like uh, the car stops and uh, or starts decelerating and you keep going if there's nothing holding you to the car and why that's worse the further you go before you um, uh, stop and what to do about it, which I think is uh, probably pretty obvious, but we can do the calculation with our uh, kinematics and uh, calculate the forces with F equals MA. So those are the three things. Okay, and I'll keep the uh, chat window open. I'll try to keep an eye out for anything. And uh, this won't be on the final. Good question. Um, uh, interesting question. Um, I'll tell you, uh, Pascal's law is going to be on the final. Uh, um, the uh, timeless equation is going to be on the final. Um, the um, properties of waves that are going to go into this explanation here are going to be on the final. But uh, the anatomy of the vocal tract uh, will not be on the final. Uh, Makes sense? Hopefully. OK, good. All right. Uh, so we'll start with uh, part one here, Waves and Sound Revisited. And if you remember, that was in, um, here's the chapter in uh, OpenStax College Physics, right? Um, showing waves and all this kind of stuff. And we've got wavelength. We've got amplitude. We've got the velocity of the wave. Um, and uh, then there's going to be a frequency related to that. Um, and that gives us this velocity of the wave is the frequency times lambda. So that's all going to be on the, on the final. Um, so switching back to here, uh, you can graph some of these things just to give you an idea of, of how that works. And then I'll add things together to show that instead of using the, the wave on a string app to make stuff you know, like this, here's a, you know, the, which I showed you before. And you can make sine waves, of course, but you can also make these kind of like square pulse waves like that. Whoop, doop, like that. And so let me go over here to the graphing calculator, which is very fun if you haven't seen it before. And um, I can plot sine of x, boom, and it looks like that. And it goes up and half uh, wavelength is right there at 3.14. And then another half length there, that's 6.28. That's pi and two pi, right? Well, I can get rid of that. Uh, and let's add one of these little slider things, which are kind of fun. I'll make a slider. Uh, I'll just put it here on the graph. And I'm going to call it t. I'm going to start with t equals 0 to start with. OK. And now I'll go back here and let's do we'll make our graph be sine of x minus t. OK. So here's the sine wave. And t, if I shift t along here like this, whoosh, see how it shifts over? 
like that. So um, if I shift T by 1.1, now that zero crossing is there at 1.1 because of X minus uh, 1.1 minus 1.1 to zero. If I shift it over here to, uh, let's say three, now it's over there at three, right? So that T is making the wave move to the right. I can start over here and animate it. There it is moving to the right. And it's moving to the right at one unit per one unit. You know, a second goes by and it moves over to the right by a second like that. Okay. So that's just to show kind of the form that a, a wave has mathematically here. Hadn't shown that before. Um, so I could add another little uh, slider here and call it, uh, let's call it, uh, I'll just put it over here. I'll make a new variable, I'll call it V. We'll start at V equals one. Because after all, oh, I didn't want to do that. I want to put it over here, there we go. So I go back here, I'm gonna change my function to be X minus V times T. Because after all, X would have units like meters and T would be seconds, right? So we should multiply it with something with units like meters per second. Let's see if it'll buy that. There we go. So now V equals one, it's just like before I let it go and it moves over one, two, three as time goes on, right? But if I set V equal to uh, two, let's say, I don't know, I make the, the string more tense or something so the wave moves faster if this is a wave on a string, then uh, it's moving twice as fast now, right? Makes sense because it's multiplying the t by two. So if I go from t equals zero, let's go put it back here at zero. It's there like that, right? And then I shift t up by one, whoosh, all the way up here to one. It's moved over two units, right? And so its velocity now is is two meters per second, right? If t is in seconds. So that's a way of representing a wave, and you can. I could let this go and I could, you know, increase the velocity like that. Yeah, woo, all right. So it's kind of like, kind of go crazy. Now it's negative, it's going the other way, like that. Make T negative. If I make T zero, of course, it's just gonna sit there. Okay, so fine, now I got some waves, that's nice. Um, what about different superposition? This thing I'm talking about with superposition, you can add different types, right? I mean, I could, Let's do one more little bit of scaling here. This is right now got a period. I'm going to set this back to zero. There we go. Oop, oh, I'll just enter zero there. Okay. <clears throat> this has got a, a wavelength of exactly two pi meters. Now we have normally in our, our uh, stuff, we've got uh, a wavelength that would depend on the frequency, right? And so we can put in the, the wavelength here just by scaling this argument. I'm going to add one more little variable here. I'll make a slider. I'll call it, I can't enter um, a Greek letter in here. So I'm going to call it capital L, but pretend that's, pretend that's lambda, right? Then if I make this instead of this, if I make this whole thing, two times pi times that thing divided by L, boom. So now when L is one, if X changes by one, this thing that's being given to the sign changes by two pi. Okay, so bear with me. This is a little bit mathematical, but hopefully it helps you uh, visualize a little bit. I can now set the wavelength to, to one like that. There's one whole thing and then another whole wavelength. Or I can uh, change L out here to, to two. And now here's one wavelength like that. There's another wavelength like that and that kind of thing. And as you play the animation here, you see it going up and down like that, right? And then, um, Oh, now it goes backwards. Time's going backwards. It's no good. Okay. Right. Hi. Great. Good to see you. Um, okay. So there you got that. Uh, and now I can make more than one function if I want. Um, so let's let's make this 
so now you can see the wavelength and uh, is two, and I can change the wavelength and at a shorter wavelength. Whoops, whoa, that was crazy. Like that, if I play it, you're gonna go bing, ding, 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 ding. Okay, it's going that way now. Okay, now it's going boom, boom. And you can see the higher frequency when you've got the shorter wavelength. And that's our, um, this is what I wanna do. There. And that's our, uh, where'd it go? Ah, yes. That's our V wave equals F lambda um, equation, that basic uh, connection there. Okay, now I'm gonna put, I said I was gonna talk about superposing waves and how that relates to sound and filtering and stuff. So I better get on with that. Let's make this function <clears throat> simpler for a second. Let's just make it for now. I'm gonna edit this. I'm just gonna make it two X 2 pi to uh, x, like that. In fact, let's even get rid of L. Let's make it just 2 pi x, like that. OK, so now it's there's one of those, right? Um, I can take this, and instead of plotting that, I can plot now f of 2 times x, like that. And now it's got a lot of wiggles, right? So we can maybe uh, zoom in here a little bit here. Right. So you can see here's uh, f of 2x has got twice as many wiggles. There's f of that as one. So it's really just um, it's really just like f with twice the you know half the wavelength, twice the frequency. There, I'm not using these these variables right now. Okay. So if I wanted to plot both of them. I can just do f of x plus f of, uh, oops, that's not what I did, 2x, like that. I don't really need those parentheses, go away parentheses. Okay, fine, we'll just do that. Okay, so you get this wiggly thing. I'll turn these two off so it's easier to see. Okay, so adding two sine waves together like that, one twice the frequency, the other, makes the, the wave look kind of kind of like that, which is neat. Um, different shape, okay? Uh, what if I do something else? What if I take um, a bunch of them? Like I could wiggle the, the um, I could try to make that shape. It's an arbitrary shape if I went here and I went down to the, the little thing like this. I, I could try to make a, like maybe I'll let it go out the end and I could go sharp wiggle, little wiggle, sharp wiggle, little wiggle, sharp wiggle, little wiggle, right? And that's um, <clears throat> what this looks like. Sharp wiggle, little wiggle, sharp wiggle, the other like that. Um, let's add some other things. I'm gonna do another one. Let's do f of three x over three plus, oops, sorry. So each one of these fumble fingers divide by three. Okay, that looks like that. That looks kind of squarish, right? If I add to that uh, f of, oops, here we go, uh, 5x over 5, it starts to look more squarish. If I add another one, plus f of 7x over 7, plus f of 9x over 9, it starts to look really squarish, right? Like that. So that's like if I were to go, I, I turn off the damping there, makes it better, right? Do, 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 do. You know, it's kind of like, like that, right? I can't quite do it smoothly enough, but you get it, right? So you can, by adding up different sine waves, you can actually get whatever waveform you want. So this thing, uh, your ear or anything that's doing this doesn't know that necessarily that they're sine waves, it's just getting these different frequencies. So it's really uh, what's coming in or what's really happening. It could be these one, two, three, four, five uh, different frequencies, which are called harmonics since they're multiples of the, uh, the um, original frequency added up with some amplitude. But if these amplitudes change for some reason, like maybe I multiply this one by zero, then it changes the shape of the thing. If I 0.5, let's do that, boom. 
Whoops, that's not what I wanted. That was not at all what I wanted. Ah, oh, how do I go back? Um, okay, but you get the idea, right? You get f of x if I did this plus instead of f of 3x over 3, it looks like that, and that looks different from the other thing. If instead I made it twice as big, it looks more like this. If I make it much smaller, it starts to look more roundish, right? So each of these is going to correspond. If this is a sound wave, it's each is going to, each one's going to correspond to a different sound. Now, now we can now I can start telling you about this. So this is wave superposition. You could do this kind of thing. These kind of summations of things gives you like wave packets, like little bunches, and then like that they travel along. Uh, you could even think of like if you do uh, if you do this thing, f of five x over five like that, and then just add one to it. It looks like it's just a pulse, boom, 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 like that. And you could add all the other ones. So that could be like a, a train of pulses coming. And there's way to like, ways to like make them shorter and longer and like that. <clears throat> so there's this really neat uh, website where you can actually play with that. And I'm gonna have to stop my share for just a second to get there. And um, because of, uh, I didn't do, set up something right. Uh, and also there. Um, so if I click on that thing I was just showing you, and I got to share again now, share. And this time when I hit share, I'm going to hit share computer sound. <clears throat> okay. Um, and optimize screen sharing for video clip. Boom. Okay. So this cool thing, if you click on this thing here, sometime you can, these slides are posted so you can go look at it, is a uh, thing that lets you add up uh, sine waves in different ways. It's got a little thing here like that, and it's running right now. And right now it's generating a sine wave. It's got a nice frequency. I've got the audio output muted, but if I unmute it, you hear it. So sorry, that's kind of loud. Sorry, that's kind of loud, but uh, hopefully that was okay. Um, all right, so it just, I can't seem to adjust the audio, can I? Um, let me try that carrier. Maybe I'll just lower that a little bit there. No, it's quite, not quite as loud. Okay, hopefully that's not too loud for you. Okay, so can you hear that beep uh, over there? It should be sharing it, yeah. Okay, there's the amplitude. Someone let me know you can hear that. Okay, good, okay, good. So you could hear it when I would unmute it, great. Okay, so now if instead I uh, now do something like uh, I change the, the type of modulation, if I make it square instead, let's say, like this, and it looks like that, I'll put the gain up just a little bit more, even though, and I let you hear it, right? Okay, hang on. Right? So th there's different uh, waveforms. Let me stop it. So the different waveforms sound different, right? Here's the, the sine wave. Um, turn that. Here's the square wave. Here's the triangle wave. Right? So each one of them sounds different. Uh, all these different kinds of sounds. Uh, if I switch this to my microphone for a second and let it do it, and I take the source from my microphone, you can see my voice looks different uh, for different uh, sounds I'm making. I can make the No, I can't go that high. And you can kind of see uh, that waveform if I go. There, I changed the freak. So that looked almost like a sine wave, the ooh sound, as opposed to like ee. It's got a lot of other stuff like like that. Zzz, looks more like the triangle wave, right? Oh, I can almost make it look like the the square wave, right? So uh, each frequency will be different um, wavelengths and frequencies, right? But on top of that, you for a given frequency, you have and I don't know if you can see my uh, 
camera right now, but if you can, uh, if I stop it, what I'm doing is I'm doing like that, right? So that's the uh, answer of how this uh, um, voice thing works, what the, uh, what the vocal tract is for. If you look at the, um, the uh, vocal tract, uh, Wikipedia, it says the vocal tract is a cavity in human beings and animals with a sound produced at the sound source, which is the larynx, ah, down here, buzzing thing, vocal cords, is filtered. Uh, and in mammals, it consists of the laryngeal ca cavity and pharynx and the oral cavity and the nasal cavity and all this stuff. And here's this quote from that paper. I think they've got too many digits of precision there when you actually read the paper, but that's okay. Um, and when it says it's filtered, what they mean is that by uh, adjusting these this stuff up here, uh, where your tongue is, uh, where, where your tongue is high or low, whether the soft palate's going up or down, uh, how your mouth is open or closed. And then of course there's uh, differences with your, your nose and nasal cavity. Uh, you take out or add and change the, um, the amplitude of these different things that I was showing like when I was doing uh, this uh, graphing calculator, right? Um, by modulating, maybe filtering these out, like, you know, just the whole thing, just time zero, darn it. Now you've got, uh, and this one times zero, now you've got a sine wave. You filtered out those higher ones. But if you make them, uh, you know, like at that amount, then you've got your square wave. Uh, if I had done it right, I'm not multiplying it, there we go, right? And then if you make it bigger, like uh, make these times three, uh, times five like that, then you start to get really buzzy stuff or you can get um, things that are like, uh, you, can, you can get all sorts of things, you start to get the square waves and stuff, uh, right? Um, so uh, maybe cut that one out and make that one not so big and make this one like here, so on and so forth. Um, okay, so these different waveforms you get by by filtering, that's what your mouth is doing, uh, being more or less resonant to different things and your whole thing. So all those changes, uh, that's where the different vowel sounds come from. And it's also why children's voices sound different at different ages as um, those uh, relative sizes of this uh, upper part change compared to um, their, uh, their sounds they're making, their fundamental frequencies. It's why adults sound different from one another uh, it's why, uh, and also if you take a tenor singer voice, like, well, I'm like kind of a baritone or almost a bass today for some reason, but I, I'm usually a tenor and you record it, you know, someone singing, uh, you are my sunshine, my only, and you speed it up a factor of two, you speed it, sing it really slow. And it sounds like the Alvin and the Chipmunks, right? Uh, instead of sounding like a soprano. Uh, so, and, and, and so forth, you slow down uh female voice even though it's it's a full octave and you change it factor two that should be an octave uh it sounds weird it doesn't it's there's more to it than just the, the mean frequency and uh yeah this is this paper it's really long that I quoted in 1980 it's is it of course it's really long it's a doctoral thesis but it's really cool there's all these measurements they made of people in various ways and uh, it came out of MIT's Department of Electrical Engineering's voice lab, I think, because they were interested in making more realistic voices, maybe, uh, but also better voice recognition, maybe even voice transformers. That was like 40 years ago. I'm still working on that. Um, anyway, so that's, that's how, uh, that's something about voices. All right. So uh, any questions or anything like that? Um, am I meant to be, oh, I was sorry, just that last little bit. Um, I was just basically reading the slide, so I didn't, you didn't miss anything that last bit. Uh, yeah, okay, here we go. Um, so here's what I was saying. Um, did you see, was I sharing when I showed this, I hope? Um, this is where I was pointing at, you know, the, the mouth and the vocal track and uh, that kind of thing. Um, so this is the stuff that you can change your shape of in various ways with all the tongue in the back there and uh, the nose affects things. And of course, um, 
when you have a stuffy nose, you start to sound like this, which changes your thing, and your, your voice sounds strange unless you uh, compensate in some way as best you can by maybe raising your uh, soft palate here and make this as big as you can and try to sound normal even though your nose is stuffed up. Um, okay, so it's, it's a big filter up here that, that changes the, uh, the relative amplitude of all those harmonics that come out of your, your buzzy larynx. Okay, and uh, yeah, so, and that's why I, I already said everything here. I think you heard it. Uh, thanks. Okay, so um, let's do something else. Let's talk about Pascal's law. I have it all written out here, but uh, when I go to the dentist, they use this wrist cuff thing, right, to measure my blood pressure. Maybe you've had it too. Um, I have to hold it at a heart level while they do it. Um, and that's like a half meter difference in height. So if we, if we uh, go ahead and uh, look at that, right? Uh, let's see, can I zoom that in a bit? Uh, we use the, the um, Pascal's law, delta P equals rho times G times delta Y, and it comes out to 4,900 Pascal's, 4,900 Newtons per square meter. Uh, so you do a unit conversion, uh, one Pascal is 0 0.00750 millimeters of mercury, so you multiply 0 0.00750 millimeters of mercury over one Pascal, and it comes out to be 37 millimeters of mercury, which is a pretty big difference. Whoops, hang on, hang on, I was going to the next one, right? So um, I wouldn't want them to, to read my blood pressure as, let's say, off by 27, read it as 140 over 101. They think I've got a big blood pressure problem because I've got my hand down on the armrest when it's really 113 over 74, which is you know much better. Um, actually, mine's usually way lower than that, and then they worry, but that's okay. That's a separate thing. Uh, but wait, it, you know, it, that's kind of funny. Um, oh, hi. Yeah. So I hear someone's uh, ringtone. I don't think it's me. Huh, that's interesting. Can everyone else hear that? I can hear that. Maybe I'll just mute some people. Oh, no, we're good. We're good. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, I figured someone didn't really want to have that shared. Oh, that sounded cool. Um, anyway, uh, back to this. I wanted to go to, yeah. So we're talking 37 millimeters of mercury, but if I do that from my heart to my brain, which is also about half meter from my heart up to my brain, then that would be a drop of 37 millimeters of mercury, which would make my blood pressure pretty low down there. If it's really 113, 74, it's track 30, somehow it's now uh, 70 over 30, that doesn't work. Um, and from my heart down to my feet, you do that, you get like uh, 96 millimeters of mercury. So that's another one of those, uh, you know, if you model the human as just a, a, tank, of, uh, a tank of blood, um, you get a silly result for what the pressures would be like. Um, so really it's not like that. We got veins and everything and there's all sorts of cool stuff going on in the uh, veins, the arteries, all the blood vessels. Um, you know, uh, so if it was just the arteries making the pressure not great, gain that much, then you'd have a problem coming up. So the real explanation is that uh, various features in the circulatory system boost the pressure as blood goes up and manage it as it goes down. Um, but a lot of it is it, it a big one is the skeletal muscle pump where like uh, as you tense your muscles in your arm or your leg or something like that, it kind of squeezes the muscles, uh, uh, the, the blood vessels and then tensing and releasing kind of helps it move along. Um, so I think maybe I'm just speculating why it matters with this rest thing is that people tend to just really relax when they're uh, hand, when they're um, at the dentist or whatever and they're in the nice chair and their arms are just laying on the rest on the uh, armrest or something like that. And so it's more important for that. Um, uh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, your blood pressure really doesn't change by 140 almost millimeters of mercury from your head to your toes. That would be silly. Um, but it does also mean uh, you get up from a couch when you're really relaxed and uh, maybe you sometimes get a little dizzy or if you completely freeze your muscles and don't twitch at all uh, while standing still, um, you'll tend to faint. Uh, that used to happen to me when I was a, 
uh, choir boy and <laughs> way back in when I was much, when I was, I don't know, 12 or whatever, I relaxed a little too much. I'm not quite sure I did, was not moving a muscle. And the, really what the choir master said was, I don't wanna see you move a muscle, <laughs> not don't actually move your muscles. Uh, so um, anyway, so don't completely freeze your muscles. If you have to stand still, you'll faint. It's okay to, it's, it's good to tense and relax without moving. I had to learn to do that consciously because of this fainting, embarrassing thing that used to happen when I was really little. Anyway, so <clears throat> that's, a, that's a Pascal's Law and Blood, I think. Um, so now another thing, let's do a, a kinematics thing. Uh, suppose you're in a front passenger seat in a car and the car stops suddenly with some acceleration, we'll call it a car. Maybe give it a minus sign because it's in the opposite direction of your motion. Let's say you're going in the plus X direction and you, the driver slams on the brakes really fast or God forbid you hit something. Um, then if you're wearing your seatbelt, you got your three point harness, uh, you got your shoulder and your lap belt and it engages right away. You basically just stop with the car. So your acceleration is the same as the car. The seatbelt exerts a total force on you. You know, the net force on you is M times A and that's the acceleration of the car. So let's suppose it's like a 5G acceleration, 50 meters per second squared. That's, uh, that's probably uh, low compared to what you'd experience in a, in a crash, uh, but it would be um, maybe reasonable for an absolute you know, uh, slam on the brakes, good condition type thing. Um, and if your mass is like 70 kilograms, I don't know, uh, I don't know what your mass is, but let's pick that. Uh, you'd feel 3,500 newtons for a short time. And that's uh, equivalent to almost 800 pounds of force, abbreviated LBF. So that's um, that's briefly uncomfortable for that that time that's being that uh, force is being applied, but it's totally survivable. <clears throat> now you compare that to like another case, the car stops, not not dead, but you know st is stopping very quickly, and you uh, don't for some reason. You're not wearing your uh, uh, seatbelt or something like that. So, you know, you've been sitting back in your, your seat, but now you start moving forward. There's no seat in front of you. Unfortunately, the seat back's behind you. It can't exert a normal force on you that pulls you back. So you keep going, right? Objects in motion keep going in motion and continue at the same speed. So relative to you, what it's happening is basically the, uh, the, the dashboard is accelerating towards you now. Uh, and that acceleration is this uh, 50 meters per second squared. So when you get there, there's a distance D between you and the dashboard, call it, oh, uh, let's, let's say 0.8 meters, that's about right for you know, like the arm maybe and a little bit more. Uh, you use this, just rewrite a little bit. V squared is gonna be that V zero squared two AX, put two times 50 meters per square second, times 0.8 meters, that's 80. And if you're doing the units right, you'll notice that's meters squared per second squared. And that thinks, hey, that's not a velocity. Oh yeah, that's right. I was solving for V squared. So take the square root and you get 8.9 meters per second, which is about 20 miles per hour. Um, okay, uh, 20 miles per hour into dashboard is not so good. You wouldn't wanna be really hit by a car going 20, even 20 miles per hour. Um, it's like jumping off the roof of a four meter tall, maybe that's almost like two story building, uh, face first maybe, and landing, that face is supposed to be landing face first into a dashboard that's resting on hard ground. You wouldn't wanna do that. So um, if you think about what's your deceleration, maybe it's got a little bit cushiness in the dashboard. So the dashboard stops you in one centimeter. You can calculate the acceleration by putting in one centimeter and that initial and final velocity, final velocity zero, initial velocity that, um, and work it out like that. Solve for A, it's zero minus 80 meters squared per second squared divided by two times that uh, 0.01 meters. It's 4,000 meters per second squared acceleration. That's 80 times the acceleration of the car. Instead of uh, 50 meters per second squared, you've got 4,000 meters per second squared. Um, that's really bad um, for you. Uh, and in fact, if you combine these two equations, you'll find that this acceleration you feel is equal to the, the ratio of the 
the delta x basically um, the moving forward relative to the car for 0.8 meters and then stop you know 80 centimeters and then stop in one centimeter you get this factor of 80. You feel this force uh 280,000 newtons that's 63,000 pounds of force um and it's a short time since it's such a short distance but that doesn't actually help actually it hurts um a very short time is bad because the speed of sound in your flesh and bones as this thing hits there and then it all starts to flex and it's basically a sound wave in your body it's too slow to distribute the force before the deformation is enough that um you're really injured um so obviously you should wear a seatbelt right uh that's also why you want padding and helmets uh or crushable foam something like that is in bicycling head helmets so that any acceleration or de deceleration occurs over a greater distance than it would happen even like you know a few uh centimeters you know maybe five centimeters is better than if you're directly contacting a hard sur surface not like a, even like a dashboard but concrete or something then you're talking concrete doesn't give right it's just going to be entirely your your bones that are giving in that case and if it's a millimeter that's kind of a lot if it's a sharp smart impact um you don't want that okay so that's where that's where this works you want uh, something that crushes crumples um that that's also why cars have crumple zones now too right instead of having uh like the old super things made out of steel and the whole thing stopped over no time you want the car to be slowing down over distance too, so that you actually get something more like, uh, oh, sorry, something more like five Gs instead of something really fast for the car that could be bad. Okay, so um, anyway, application of the timeless equation V squared minus V zero squared equals two A delta X nine. Um, airbags are interesting. Uh, it's a, a fine balance, right? Uh, that once that airbag's fully uh, inflated, it's nice and cushy. And in addition to your seat belt and everything, uh, you basically have um, this nice, huge air-filled pillow between you uh, and, uh, and the dashboard and anything else. And it kind of holds everything in place. And um, I had an aunt who was unfortunately in a really bad accident. And when she went out and got her next car, um, she'd been T-boned basically in an intersection and she's uh, quite old, so it was not good. But she just said, um, her next car, she is, uh, I've got airbags all around me everywhere. If, if anyone hits me, I'm just going to be encased inside and uh, top and everything, you know, from all sides and cushy stuff. Um, but the thing is, in order to get fully inflated before you hit it, they have to use basically an explosive to uh, inflate it so it's fast enough. So you don't want to be... Um, in the way of that, uh, because it's really bad. And there's been lots of uh, demos of that, but probably the biggest one was this, uh, uh, the one I'm most memorable is this Mythbusters airbag mini bit myth where they actually you know, made a, a mannequin and a realistic uh, um, kind of synthetic ca cadaver, didn't we use a real one and uh, saw what would happen if someone had their feet up on their dashboard or, uh, their legs up, uh, you know, propped up, their feet, you know, one like just kind of up like this and the other actually like this. Uh, if you, I don't know if you can, uh, see my video there, um, like this, like on the dashboard like that so that your knee would be right in line your face. The myth was, could this kill you? And uh, they concluded it wouldn't kill you, it would just horribly maim you. And they took a, a high speed video of the uh, the crashes that they did with this um, this different situation, and it was really horribly gruesome. And I've got a link to here, but I don't think I will play play it right now because even though it was on public TV and uh, you know not public television, but you know the, the Discover Network and everything, it's uh, pretty dramatic. But if if you haven't seen it before and and you don't mind, it's only about two minutes long, uh, you could go take a look at it and uh, you'll probably never prop your uh, feet up on the dashboard with an airbag ever again. Um, pretty amazing. Uh, anyway, uh, so I don't know if how many people have saw that before. Um, it was some years ago now. Uh, and I don't know if I've seen it, it's, it's really something. Um, okay, so that's all I actually had these three things uh, that I put together as all like 
you know, health related things. Um, sound waves, harmonics and the filtering, hopefully that was interesting and the nice graph. Um, Pascal's law of calculation and the, the, um, the velocity change related to acceleration times distance. Uh, 